freeze and put your hands in the air. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 terrifying held at gunpoint scenes. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be focusing only on scenes where armed gunmen threaten unarmed hostages, which means no gun-related standoffs, Mexican or otherwise. Put your hands up. No. Number 10, Tony's Revenge, Scarface. If you want to assassinate an unhinged gangster, you better not screw it up. That's exactly what drug dealer Frank Lopez and dirty cop Mel Bernstein learn when they try and fail to whack Tony Montana. After escaping the attempted hit relatively unscathed, Tony pays Frank a surprise visit at his car dealership. Expecting Tony to be dead, Mel and Frank can do nothing but beg to be spared. Get him! Jesus! Get him! No! <laughs> Tony's cold fury makes him an intimidating presence, and his victims' pitiful attempts to bargain for their lives almost make you feel sorry for them. This may be one of Tony's more subdued moments, but that doesn't make it any less frightening. Every dog has his day. Number nine, shoot the hostage, speed. Uh, pop quiz, hotshot! Pop quiz, hotshot! How many times has Keanu Reeves fired a gun in his career? Okay, that question's a bit unfair, but one of the most memorable times he's fired a weapon is in this action-packed thriller. Reeves plays LAPD explosives expert Jack Traven, who's forced to match wits with self-proclaimed eccentric bomber Howard Payne, played with insane glee by Dennis Hopper. See, I'm in charge here. I drop this stick, huh? And they pick your friend up with a sponge. Are you ready to die? When Payne takes Travin's partner Harry hostage and threatens to blow up the building, Travin's forced into a sticky situation. Luckily, Harry gives him some choice advice. Shoot the hostage. The creative, surprising solution turns the hostage situation on its head. The look on Payne's face is priceless, although Harry is less than thrilled. Freeze! Number eight, blindsided the killer. <laughs> Director John Woo is no stranger to guns, as demonstrated in movies like Hard Boiled. But one of his tensest scenes comes near the end of The Killer. After a furious gun battle in a church that features tons of death, destruction, and doves, cowardly mob boss Wong Hoi takes Jenny, a blind singer and friend of professional killer Ah Zhang, and puts a gun to her head. <laughs> Unwilling to let an innocent woman get hurt, Ah Zhang and Lee, his cop friend, momentarily surrender. A temporary respite from all the bloodshed that preceded it, this scene shows that sometimes even hitmen can avoid violence, if it means protecting someone they love. Only sometimes, though. Number 7. A Walk in the Woods Miller's Crossing. Then you put one in his brain, then he's dead, then we go home. If a gun goes off in the forest and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? In this Coen Brothers neo-noir, that's exactly what Tom Reagan finds out. Tom is forced to prove his loyalty to local gangsters by taking low-life Bernie Birnbaum out to the titular woods to kill him. Tommy, you can't do this! You don't bump guys! The only problems, Tom doesn't have an appetite for murder and Bernie frantically pleads for his life the entire time. It's a dream, Tommy, I'm praying to you. I can't die. I can't die. The fact that both Tom and Bernie's lives are on the line, as well as Bernie's pathetic but poignant speech, make this one hike you won't soon forget. Tommy, shut up. You're dead, get me? Number six, career motivation, Fight Club. Hey, is that a gun? Please. Please tell me that's not a gun. Perhaps the most weirdly positive example on this list, Tyler Durden gives us a scary example of how to properly motivate someone in David Fincher's cult classic dark comedy. After running into college dropout Raymond K. Hessel, Tyler pulls a gun on the man and tells him he's gonna die, seemingly for no reason. Raymond, <laughs> you're going to die. <laughs> once he learns that Raymond once dreamed of being a veterinarian, Tyler gives the poor man an ultimatum. Raymond agrees, and Tyler lets him go. If you're not on your way to becoming a veterinarian in six weeks, you will be dead. <laughs> I run on home. 
What starts off as a tense and seemingly random act of violence becomes a funny and, in a way, life-affirming act. Who needs Tony Robbins when you've got Tyler Durden? I feel ill. Imagine how he feels. Number five, shrinking balls. Snatch. There are two types of balls. If there's one thing to take away from Guy Ritchie's crime capers, it's that most criminals are dumb. And nobody is more aware of this than tough guy bounty hunter Bullet Tooth Tony. When a gang of wannabe thugs thinks they can get the drop on him with some fake guns, Tony swiftly puts them into place with a speech that's as eloquently delivered as it is badass and funny. Tony's deadpan delivery only emphasizes the absurdity of what he's saying. You're having second thoughts. You're shrinking. And your two little balls are shrinking with you. The thug's reaction to finding out they're screwed is both hilarious and, in the long run, probably the smartest thing they could have done. It's too bad the other characters don't share Tony's knowledge of firearms. And the fact that I've got Desert Eagle. 0.50. Number four, storm drain confrontation. The fugitive. Put that gun down! It may be hard to make Tommy Lee Jones laugh, but it's even harder to make him scared. Jones plays U.S. Marshal Samuel Gerard, the man tasked with finding and capturing fugitive Dr. Richard Kimball, played by Harrison Ford. Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. <laughs> Go get him. Early on, Gerard pursues Kimball through a series of storm drains, and after slipping in some water, he loses track of his gun only for Kimball to find it. With the tables turned, Kimball lets Gerard know he's innocent. Unfortunately for the good doctor, Gerard has other thoughts on the matter. I didn't kill my wife! I don't care! Even though Kimball is the hero, it's hard not to root for someone who's literally indifferent in the face of danger. Number three, Ezekiel 2517. Pulp Fiction. You read the Bible, Greg? <laughs> yes! Well, there's this passage I got memorized. It sort of fits this occasion. Ezekiel 25, 17. Murder is a dish best served cold, and preferably with a big kahuna burger or a delicious breakfast. In Pulp Fiction, Samuel L. Jackson is positively biblical in his performance as Jules, a hitman who seems to have aspirations to be the world's most terrifying preacher. Nowhere is this more evident than the scene where Jules and his partner Vincent pay a visit to Brett in order to retrieve a briefcase for their boss. Jules starts the meeting cordially enough, even politely asking for a taste of Brett's food. Mm hmm This is a tasty burger. But things get apocalyptic when Jules busts out his favorite Bible passage. Darkly comedic, impressive, and scary all at once. This is one sermon that will definitely stay with you. You will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Yeah! Number two, Schrodinger's head, seven. Oh, uh, what's in the box? Package delivery for Mr. Mills, a grungy crime film centered around the seven deadly sins. Seven isn't exactly filled with sunshine and rainbows. The ending, where Detective Mills holds serial killer John Doe at gunpoint, is especially deranged. There he goes. Just as Mills and his partner Somerset think they've captured Doe and put an end to his crimes, a delivery truck appears. Doe explains to Mills that the package is meant for him, and then proceeds to describe how jealous he was of Mills' marriage to his wife Tracy. I'm trying to tell you how much I admire you and your pretty wife. As the control of the scene switches from Mills to Doe, Mills' breakdown and Doe's unnerving calm will make you feel sick in the best way possible. Oh. He didn't know. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. The first one won't kill you. Not the second. Not even the third. Not till you crawl over here and you kiss my foot. Again, I own the police! Besides, they couldn't match up the bullet that killed your old man. Am I the only one around here who gives a shit about the rules? Mark at zero. They're calling the cops, man. Put the piece away. Mark at zero. Walter. Number one, do I feel lucky? 
Dirty Harry. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Clint Eastwood has made a career out of saying awesome things while pointing guns at people, like in Sudden Impact. Go ahead. Make my day. But nothing beats his endlessly quotable speech from Dirty Harry, which is so cool it actually shows up in the film twice. The first time is after Harry single-handedly thwarts a bank robbery and has one of the robbers dead to rights. Well, do you, punk? The second is after a heated gunfight with the abhorrent serial killer, Scorpio. Both scenes are gritty, suspenseful, and prove one thing. You don't want to be on the wrong side of Harry's gun barrel. You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you? Punk. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.